There's a magic in video games that existed back in the day. I'm not talking about back in the day as in all the way back in the day with Pong and pretty much the basics and the beginnings of video games in the industry. But I'm talking about the days of the Nintendo 64, the PS1, then of course you have the GameCube, the Dreamcast, the PS2, the Xbox, and I could even count the Wii 360 and PS3 as well. Of course you don't want to forget the Super Nintendo or the NES, but you guys get what I'm saying and the whole handhelds that come with those generations. Looking at gaming today, especially modern gaming and AAA gaming, I feel like a lot of the time companies no longer want to take risks. Why would they? There's just a bunch of different reasons why a game flopping is more than just a financial failure. It's enough to really just close a company entirely. But with that fear, loses the magic that made games special in the first place. If you look at this generation, we're getting a lot of remakes and remasters, and honestly, as someone who's played these games back in the day, we are pretty much the main beneficiaries when it comes to these games being made. Shit, there have been remakes that I didn't even know I wanted or needed. And I don't want to say that it's lazy, because at the end of the day, especially when done right, these remakes are magical and gives them a modern touch that allows players from the new generation to experience the games that we loved back in the day. But where are the new ideas? Where are the new IPs? Where are the legacy IPs that we were used to, especially back in the PS2, GameCube, and Xbox era that are just flat out gone? Jack and Daxter, nowhere to be found. However, we're getting pretty much remasters of The Last of Us over and over and over. Now, I love The Last of Us. And I do support those remasters uh, personally, and that could rub you the wrong way in reality. But I am very well aware that people want something new or they want things that have been lost in time. I'm not a fan in particular of the Banjo and Kazooie series, but where are they? Why was Rare bought out by Microsoft and then seemingly they just stopped making the games that people love to begin with altogether? I think sequels are great. I think too many sequels of the same series tend to get a bit redundant. You need a break sometimes, right? And so what happened? Well, as I mentioned before, there was a big shift. Games take longer to make and they are much, much more of a financial investment. And of course, companies want to make their investors happy. And so I feel like the safe route is to do these remakes, is to do these remasters, is to make sequels from already established high profile IPs that you know even if the game isn't that great, people are going to buy it anyway because the name holds so much weight and they want to be a part of the experience and the discussion. But because of that, we've lost so many greats to time. If you even just look at Nintendo for example, I feel like Nintendo was at their best, at their riskiest at their brightest during the GameCube era. Even if the GameCube was a commercial flop, the lineup on that damn system in terms of fir first party IPs was godlike. Even if you look at the Game Boy Advance's library, so many different types of games for you to choose from. The Nintendo DS, an extensive library. The Wii was kinda eh, you know what I mean? Especially with the limitations of just motion controls in general and the industry getting used to them. Don't get me wrong, the Wii had some good first party titles, but at the end of the day, I really think the GameCube shined bright when it came to what it provided on that console. The PS2's library was fucking stacked. There were so many different kinds of games and series and RPGs that you just do not see from Sony at all anymore. I think the one thing though that is saving this era of no risk taking and the same IPs over and over and just the lack of, I want to say passion and creativity sometimes on some fronts is indie devs. Usually a lot of the time indie devs have it hard because it's almost like damn do I really want to take a chance on this game with my money when there's no real backing to it being good or not, right? But the thing and the beauty about indie devs is that they pour a lot of soul and passion into these games. It's almost as if consumers are the ones making the games, right? And I feel like indie devs don't really lose touch of that. Not only because they have something to prove, especially with their own credibility, they just at the end of the day really, 
want to make a great game without cutting corners, but also they do not have the resources of AAA studios, so they really do depend on us to pretty much reward their labor of love with our money so they can continue to grow, succeed, and provide new experiences for us. As a very, very avid horror fan, I do love me some AAA horror games, I'm not gonna lie. But I find now, the scariest games aren't made by those AAA established studios anymore. The scariest games, the riskiest games, are indeed taken by those indie studios. And I think that's something to celebrate and respect, no matter what. And I do like that nowadays, a lot of the indie studios are getting more of the limelight, they're getting more credit, and of course they're getting a lot more attention. Undertale is an indie game. Undertale is one of the most impactful games I've ever played in my life. Undertale tattoos, literally. Like, that game means a lot to me. Lethal Company. The game was made by one person. <laughs> and that game, as you can see, is one of the pretty much most popular games, not only of the year, but even going into the new year, it's still topping 100,000 plus players daily. Literally. Humongous game. Like, the list goes on, right? And so, I just truly want to know where we went and why we can't go back. Again, I love my remakes. I love my sequels, my remasters, my prequels. Uh, shit, if you tell me that... <laughs> if you tell me Resident Evil 5 is getting remade, I am popping off. I am a big Capcom fanboy, and I actually respect Capcom and Square especially a lot because... They are knocking these remasters and remakes out of the park, literally. They they are so good, and you can tell that they're made with labors of love also, of course, paying tribute to the OG source material. Very, very important. But a lot of the times when I see other companies do this, it feels like almost like a cash grab at times, right? Not really made to satisfy the fans, but made because this is something that will surefire succeed and there's less risk involved. And I think the moment we stop taking risks on these works of arts that we call games, the moment that these things become intensely repetitive and just the joy of gaming kind of loses its true meaning. That's why I personally feel like every era that was the 360 PS3 and Wii and before were peak eras of gaming and we didn't even realize it until it was just too late.